Yes, thank you for uh, uh, the introduction and the possibility to uh, participate in today's uh, conference. I have got uh, no presentation. I would like to uh, focus on the um, uh, on the problem of of the future of the American textualism and originalism uh, in the context of some particular cases. I finally chose one case to uh, go deeper into the um, into the thinking of the uh, justices uh, of the Supreme Court uh, in uh, United States I especially uh, focus on the uh, conservative uh, justices of the of the Supreme Court because uh, they are now majority so uh, the their impact uh, is uh, probably uh, bigger. Um, there are some decisions in the Supreme Court case law which leave an imprint. Uh, when we think about this landmark cases, we think about Brown versus Mississippi, Roe v. Wade, Obergefell v. Hodges. Uh, this, and uh, now we can add at least one powerful judgment to, to this list, uh, although uh, it involved the statutory interpretation of the Congress Act, not constitutional law, but it's still really important. Uh, this judgment is Bostock versus Alton County, uh, which was not only a milestone in the fight for the abolition of discrimination of LGBT plus people, it is also an important sign which shows the probable future of the conservative majority in the Supreme Court. Um, the aim of my speech is firstly to show a path to the judgment. I focus on the role of the textu textualists and analysis of the reasons why definitely conservative Justice Gorsuch joined liberals and why the conservative wing of the Supreme Court did no not create the common dissent. I believe that understanding of the current balance of forces is important in predicting when the Supreme, where the Supreme Court is heading to in the next years or even decades. Uh, the main problem is the, uh, in, in, in this case, is the meaning of the term because of sex of Title VII of the Civil Rights Act. This act was established in 1964 in a completely different situation when it comes to LGBT plus rights. There were diverse understandings of this term. Obama administration understood discrimination based on sexual orientation as based on sex too. However, Donald Trump's administration narrowed this understanding. Yes? Uh, after revealing Bostock judgment, Trump has firstly seemed not to directly attack it. He said that some people were surprised at this decision and said that the court had ruled and we live have to live with their decision. He also called the judgment very powerful, but uh, a few days later after the next Supreme Court judgment, he changed his tone and said that both decisions were horrible and politically charged. Uh, and about the case, the plaintiff, Gerald Bostock, was the employee of the Clayton County and was fired for joining and promoting a gay softball league among uh, work colleges. Georgia, where the Clayton County is situated, didn't have a state law protecting LGBT plus people from employment discrimination. So his ca case was decided firstly by a district court and then by 11th Circuit Court on the basis of the Civil Rights Act. Both courts rejected his motion, relying on previous sentences which stated the discrimination on sex sexual orientation and gender identity is not banned under Title VII. The second circuit in case of Altitude Express uh, uh, versus Zarda. Zarda was a skydiving instructor who told his fem female client about being gay to make her more comfortable during um, training requiring uh, physical contact. And after his declaration, he was fired. And the sixth uh, circuit in case of Harris Funeral Homes stated opposingly. So the case reached the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court majority opinion in this three combined cases stated that uh, an employer who fires an individual merely for being gay or transgender violates Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. 
It was delivered by Justice Gorsuch and signed by five other justices, Chief Justice Roberts, Breyer, uh, Jensburg, uh, Sotomayor and Kagan. As we can see, the opinion crossed traditional divisions. Yes, two conservative justices joined uh, liberal justices who vote as a bloc. Liberal justices treat the Constitution and the Civil Rights Act as something alive, which can change its meaning due to new social values as equality of LGBT plus and straight people. So their common voting was not as surprises. Comprehension of the dissenting opinion, opinions is necessary to understand the tendencies in current text, textualism and originalism. Firstly, I will explain these two terms. Uh, textualism is an idea that we should interpret the law, especially the constitution, by literal interpretation of the analyzed act. It is quite similar to Polish clarification interpretation. Thanks to focusing not only on the past, but also on current understanding of the text, it is partly dynamic. Originalism is an idea that while interpreting the law, we should find the real intentions of the founders of the constitution. The term was created by Roe Berger, who criticized the judicial activism, especially from the era of Warren Court. The most important practitioner of the originalism was Justice Scalia, who created so-called new originalism or ordinal public meaning, which orders to read the constitution the way the current founders would do it. However, Randy Barnett indicated that if the results of Justice Scalia's reasoning were other than he preferred, he would ignore the foundations of originalism. Justice Scalia also used textualism, but unorthodoxly, which reflects perfectly his sentence, the good textualist is not a literalist. It is also important to mark that when it comes to the Congress Act, Conservatives, uh, conservatives usually prefer to focus on the text, but when it comes to interpreting constitution, on intention of the founders. It is a result of their caution in judicial activity and reluctance to big government with many regulations. These two ideas can easily go in a pair, as both reject living constitutionalism and judicial activism, which are based on fun functional interpretation, free from looking for old uh, intentions and more connected with current values. However, textualism and originalism could give different results because they have other aim and textualism is more dynamic. Bostock versus Alton County is an example of a case where textualism and originalism can lead to different conclu conclusions, with originalist one more conservative and textualist one more liberal. Firstly, let's focus on the majority opinion. Justice Gorsuch clearly rejects originalist foundations. He admits that those who adopted the Civil Rights Act might not have anticipated their work, it would lead to this particular result. But the limits of the drafter's imagination supply no reason to ignore the law's demands. Then, as, te uh, as a textualist, he declares, when the express terms of a statute give us one answer and extra textual considerations suggest another, it's no contest. Only the written word is law and all persons are entitled to its benefit. Secondly, the majority opinion indicates that the term because of sex was understood broadly in former judgments, for example, stretched on maternity and conformity to gender stereotypes. Gorsuch also gives examples of possible situations in workplaces with firing, firing only male person for his attraction to male person. And in one situation, it is a male employee and in a second, a woman. The conclusion is that, that, that uh, there was discrimination based on sex. It is clear that majority opinion was written not only for lawyers and plaintiffs, but also for the uh, broad uh, audience. Justice Gorsuch probably wanted precisely to justify his opinion, as he disappointed both the president Donald Trump, who has nominated him, and uh, a lot of his colleagues, conservative justices. Uh, thanks to it, uh, his opinion is one of the most clear and logic, even for people who do not share his views, both liberals and on this topic, extreme conservatives or even question his judicial status because occupies so-called stolen seat. This is also interesting why Chief Justice Roberts joined the majority opinion. Firstly, he is quite moderate as for Republican nominated justice. Secondly, as Chief Justice, he does not want the Supreme Court to raise polarization of the society, 
But thirdly, Sen Trendy in Why Roberts Gorsuch Voted with Liberals uh, gives an interesting clue. As the most senior justice in the majority, Roberts determine, determines who authors the opinion. If the chief justice had dissented, the majority opinion would have been written by Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the informal leader of the liberal bloc at that time. Uh, so it could be a very pragmatic decision of Justice Roberts. The Justice Alito dissented and uh, Justice Thomas joined him. He also used a textualist approach. In fact, all three opinions were based on textualism, but combined it with originalist one. He interprets because of sex in the context of 1964, the year the Civil Rights Act was enacted, before Stonewall, before common visibility of LGBT plus people and rights movement. Justice Alito indicates that the legislators in 1964 thinking about term sex could, uh, couldn't think about sexual, sexual orientation or gender identity. Justice Alito does not support or openly oppose a ban on discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender, on our gender identity. He focuses on the role of the court, saying that there is only one word for what the court has done today, legislation. His language is really strong. He writes about the decision, a more brazen abuse of our authority to interpret st status is hard to recall. For him, the majority opinion is pirate ship, which sails under a textualist flag, but in reality represents the theory that courts should update all statutes so that they better reflect the current values of society. To attack Justice Gorsuch, Justice Alito here and many other times invokes the authority of Justice Scalia, whose seat is now occupied by his popular and friend, Justice Gorsuch indeed. Uh, Justice Alito, in order to show that there is a possibility of discriminating LGBT plus people without discriminating them because of sex presents and accepts really shocking example the employer who has a policy with clause we do not hire gays lesbians or transgender in individuals uh, it is important that justice uh, kavanaugh did not join alito dissent but wrote his own it was definitely more pro lgbt uh, with phrases about um, millions of gay and lesbian americans have worked hard for many decades to achieve equal treat treatment in fact and law uh, and uh, he did not attack the majority opinion so strongly but also was again uh, against uh, broader uh, interpretation and focused on separation of powers uh, underlined that uh, under the constitution separation of powers i believe that it was congress role not this court to amend title 7 in order in contrary to justice alito he openly supports banning the discrimination based on sex, sexual orientation and gender identity and to sum up i would like to underline the importance of this decision in the context of fears about possible activity of clearly conservative majority in the supreme court it can be a next uh, next sign after some other this, uh, that year's uh, judgments when Chief Justice joined a liberal bloc that the majority of justices will not withdraw a lot of judgments supported by more progressive justices, even if they personally oppose them, as Obergefell and Rob Vivide. Both because of the tendencies of chief justice not to raise the polarization of the very polarized society and keep the stability of the Supreme Court and due to changes in society and uh, change among justice, because the younger conservative justice are strictly connected to religious freedom, gun possession rights, economic liberties, but stopping the LGBT plus rights movement is not a priority for them. And the result is that they focus not on their ideology, but on interpreting two ideas which formed them, textualism and originalism in a different way, and are prepared to oppose the expectations of the right, even of their more, most notable ancestors as Justice Scalia. Of course, it can be changes in the future, but for now, I believe that, that uh, it, it is important to underline that neither Gorsuch, Roberts, nor Kavanaugh are going the way of Joel Paul Stevens or even Anthony Kennedy. They are consistent conservatives, but uh, in such issues as LGBT rights, they are now orthodox. And the fact that Gorsuch delivered the majority opinion indicates that the textualist approach really defines him. And it was a good tactic of, uh, of lawyer uh, Pamela Carlan, counsel for Bostock, to appeal to his and other justices' textualist nature. Thank you very much.